Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. Um, I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to hope that uh, we can get those of you that have been painting a while to paint along with us. Today we're going to be doing our raccoons. We'll do the second fire. This is my final product from before. And as you can see, the eyes are so dark you can barely see them. So I think it's really important that we did them in gray this time. And so there they are in gray. And um, the little gray eyes, I think we will be able to keep them from getting that dark, dark black. But these are the colors. I added white down here and I took off uh, some of the dark greens I had on here. I put a little bit of carnation on because I use reds like carnation or pompadour very lightly for the ears on the animal. And I did the ears before I fired it. So you'll be able to see how that turns out. Then I have um, like a yellow brown two or a pecan. You can use that, a yellow brown. This color, I'm uh, not using a whole lot. These two greens mainly will be for my grass and for me, the outline. Uh, you definitely need a lot of rich brown or a dark brown like that. A black and a warm brown gray would be good if you have it. If not, just take a little bit of brown and mix it with a silver gray or something like that and you'll get the color. So those are the colors I'm using. Brushes. Um, I will again be using my itty bitty teeny tiny five zero brush or the tiniest thinnest brush you have for the fur. I do have my fur brush handy though in case I need to use it. And this is what a fur brush looks like. Okay, it's coarse. I also have the rake handy. Um, where's my rake? Here. And uh, maybe if I hold it in front of my face, there you can see. This one is every other, see how it is? It's like every other bristle. And this one is a very coarse brush. So that's the difference with those. I have a pointer this time because I'm gonna be working on the log a little bit probably. Uh, I also have both a number two and a number six that I use. Uh, these are uh, Ryan or Rin's brushes, but they're, they're German brushes. And then I have um, this one, which I think is probably a three quarter inch. And it's just, a, you know, I bought it at the store. And if you do that, you just play with them in the store. If they're really coarse or hard to use and they're not soft, they need to be soft, um, then don't get them because they won't work real well for you and you'll be fighting with them all the time. I'm going to start with the face as always. Um, I'm using my very finest brush, the little itty bitty one here. Move these apart so I can get to them. This one. And I'm just uh, going to use my black and do the eyes first, of course. Because if you don't get the eyes right, the rest of it really doesn't matter, right? So I'm just going to go around the little eyes and make sure that they're dark enough. And that you have a white spot. Now... If you don't have a white spot, let's say for some reason you made a mistake and you forgot to include the white spot in the middle of their eyes, you can put white there, but it's gonna look fake. So what I would suggest is you put the white on first if you have to, if you don't, don't do it. And then just take and put the black around it like this and it will shape it. So let me show you here. Here's my tile. Okay. If you painted it and it's all black like this, okay. And then you decide, oh no, I forgot to put the white in the middle. Oh no. You can take white and put it where you want it, like here or down further like that, but it's gonna look fake. So then take a little bit of black and go around it and shape it and kind of blend it in so that it doesn't look so so fake, okay? We're still in the black. Remember the other thing I told you is you need to leave a little circle around their eyes. This is the point where it's very important that's what gives them the mask effect. So you're gonna start and you're just gonna start 
pulling gently outward. Okay, that's a little thick there. So I have this. I'm going to use my pointer to kind of lift a little of the paint there because I don't want it quite that heavy. And the reason I don't is because if you make it too black, your little guy's eyes are going to look ridiculous. Okay? So it's important that you pull it down, make it look a little furry. There we go. But leave that white. See the white I left? You have to leave that white. Okay. And I am going to have to, where is it? Just get a dry brush here. I'm just going to touch this down with a dry brush that I had handy. There we go. That's better. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to turn my thing a little bit so I can do it from here. Gently go around him. But I want to leave the white circle. And I'm going to have to get my, uh, here it is, my, my pointer out. This is the pickiest part of this. I've done that guy. And see how he turned out? Now I'm going over here and doing the same thing. Just pulling the color out, actually. The black on this one is a little nicer. It's not quite so dark. You don't want to go too dark on your black. If you go too dark on your black, the other thing that might happen is it might chip. And that would be terrible. Right here, this still seems a little... Here, i will clean my brush somewhat. And put just a little oil on it and then go back in and just try to tease this out a little. There we go. There we go. And here, a little more here. Mm -hmm. And let, let it be a little furry and then go back around that circle around the eye. Very important. Take your time, wipe it out, wipe it off on your towel, go back in and do it again till you get it just right. If you don't get this right, this is going to, this will change everything. So you don't, you don't want it to be, oops, that's way too dark. Let me just start over there. If that happens, just start over. Do your eye over and do your little guy over there. Because otherwise it's going to be way too dark. So let me get the, let me turn him to face me to do the eye again. Sorry about that. Okay. And then I'm just going to do it. You can even wipe it on your towel a towel a little just to get a lot of the excess black off. Because you want it to be kind of smoky, not necessarily a heavy black. Look at that. That's perfect. Then look at them head on, make sure that the eyes match because obviously the eyes would be symmetrical. And here I need to pull this up a little more. Okay. Alrighty, come on here, come here. All right. So that's my little guy. And I'm just going to play with them a little here, here, 
here. Okay. All right. Now I have already put the pink in the ears, as you can see, but it's very pale. I used car uh, carnation. You can use any color. Right now I'm happy with it. So let's clean my, my brush. And um, it's another reason I like to use the Turpinoy Natural. It will also help to clean your brush. And then I'm going to go into my warm brown gray. And like I said, if you don't have warm brown gray, you could probably make it pretty easily. And I'm just pulling these out. And this time I can go into my warm brown gray and have it be fairly dark. And you always turn it upside down when you're working on pulling things out. That way it's natural. You always should pull towards yourself. So that's why I'm doing this. So if you see that it looks upside down to you, it is. And that's the reason is because you always work from the bottom up when you're doing fur and stuff because you want to pull the color. Um, you want to make it um, come the right direction. And it's just easier if you turn it upside down and do it towards yourself. Keep putting more color on because I need it. And I put a little more there. Oh. Don't eliminate the white above the eyes either because that's important. Make sure you keep that. And then do the same thing on this side. Warm brown gray. Now, if you want them to be a little more black, you can take a little black and mix it in with your warm brown gray and get it a little more black like that if you want. And I might do that down here. Just take a little black, mix it in with your warm brown gray and just add a little darker color down there. Maybe a little darker color here. This is what I'm doing. I'm taking it from here, mixing it in here. Always mix it on the, oops, on the lighter side. And keep mixing it until you get it the way you want it. And then you pull it up. I know my palette looks like a mess. I've been doing raccoons for quite a while here. And I want a little center of his nose. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now... Now that I've painted all that in, you can see that it looks like his ears are not um, dark enough. So I'm going to take my pointer really quickly. just And when you pull the red for the pink, just pull it off the edge. You want it real pale. You don't want it dark. And just do it here like this. Just touch it in. And if it's too dark, press it. Go back and do it again. And keep doing that until you get it exactly the way you want it. Okay. That's that little guy. We're going to do his nose yet, and then he'll be done on the face. Oh, come here, you. And then if you need to, you can take, like uh, Carl showed you, take your, your pico pay and just pull them out a little bit to give them a little more color. Now over here, you see I, I've eliminated that white over his eyes, and I want to get that back. So I want to take my eraser, wipe it off completely, and go back and lift that color from there, and then just pull it out ever so gently. Okay. All right, and that's how they look. Now he's got a look of a, a little guy. Now, if for some reason this fires off and you don't think it's, it's dark enough, 
Um, what I would recommend you do is um, on the third fire, which we're not going to go into a third fire here, but you just basically repeat these steps. So I don't think it's too difficult. Okay. And now I just want to give them a little more. Make sure that the fur is smooth. If it's not, go back and smooth it. And I think I need to do that here. I just need to smooth this fur a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to do this guy. Same thing. I'm going to take my black, mix it into my... I really like that. I think that worked out real well. Mix it into my... Um, brown gray and do his little whiskers. Now, when you're doing the whiskers, this is important. You're going to go from the way they grow. They grow away from the center. So you want to start here and you want to fan out. See what I'm doing? I'm fanning out. Now there are brown and there are black um, raccoons. You have to decide which raccoon you prefer. Doesn't matter. Shouldn't have done that there. Here we go. That's a place where I should use a Q-tip because I don't want to go into the background and leave color in the background. Okay. Alrighty. And so I'm going to pull from down here. Pull it up all the way to the top. And now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna speed up a little bit because you get the idea, I'm sure, at this point. Now, if you can't speed up, don't. Do it at your own pace. If you're painting along with me, do it at your own pace. Here I've got more white above the eye than I really need, and so I'm just cutting into that a little bit. Wanna make sure I have some color there. And then I'm up. Started using the side of that brush, and I don't want to do that. Here we go. I want to use the tip. See, if you use the tip, you get these really fine little guys. Up. So here, I'm just going to cut back in with my pico paint, and then I will take my Q-tip and clean that up a little. Okay, now I'm going to clean everything off. I'm going to clean my pointer, too, because I want to go back into my red just lightly, like I showed you. And just put a little... Oh, I think I need a little more red. Maybe not. Put a little pink in there. Okay? You should always paint with something in front of you. Either use my uh, example or... Um, that I posted or just um, get a picture of a raccoon. You don't need to use mine. There we go. Okay. Then turn it so you can see how he looks. Make sure that he's symmetrical. So now we're going to start working on his body. I think my log is pretty good. I'm going to have to add some dark to it, but I'd rather get his body done. And um, I'm probably going to continue to use this black-brown mixture over what I have there. I just kind of like it, and I think it's, it's really nice. Um, but I'm going to use a larger brush, and um, I'm going to use a, a, a number, what is this, four? No, I better use my six, because I do need a brush that has some width to it in order to get what I want. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Start under his chin. I loaded the brush only on the side. Now I've got the, I already have the, um, the brown undertones, so I'm fine. That's why I'm doing this. You want to keep it very close together. Let me get my number six here and push this back a little. His muzzle, this little part down here, should stay fairly clean. And if you take your color, put it only on one side, like this, you want to stay really close together. Really close together, and that will give you some shape. 
to the little muzzle. I'm mixing black and um, warm brown gray. Let me turn them forward to see what they look like. Cute, but I think these guys need a little more color down in here. Let's bring the color down a little more on this side. Okay, because you're working upside down, you need to check it frequently. Here, I don't like this. Okay, so now I'm cleaning my brush again because I set it down. As soon as I set it down, I forget which side I painted it with. So I have to clean my brush. And I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to take that color and I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the darkest parts of him. So these were the darker parts down here. You want to do where his... This is a little arm, and this is a little arm. So you want to do down here at the base. And I'm mixing my black, brown, and uh, black and yellow, brown, gray as I go. And then you want to come up this way a little too. And you're going to sort of move this outer color down a little bit. go. I want this behind this and I want the edges of this. There we go. Now I'm going to add in a little warm brown gray. I mean a little brown because I want him to have that brown look to him too. And if you feel that you need to add a little black to all your colors just to make them kind of go together, you can. These are his little hands. So I want, to, I want to wipe out his little hands. This is one little hand here, and this is one here. It's kind of hard to see them. I think I want a little more gray up in here. There we go. Yeah, that's a little better. He kind of looks like he has two different bodies, doesn't he? I'm going to have to take and put a little of this up in here. taking my dark yellow brown and putting it up into the top a little. Just patting it across to give them a little more. You want the color to be con more consistent. I'm just tapping it. I'm not really trying to change what I did there, but I'm just trying to give them more color. And then I'm using my fur brush to sort of Pull out his fur a little. There we go. And put a little depth in here. Now remember, if you, this is going to be your last time, you can use black for depth. Okay. Okay. Now a little more. Let me get my little tiny brush and do some of this. Okay. Oops, don't really like that. So I'm going to take my rake and rake it back. There we go. Okay. Now I have to use my little teeny tiny brush and define his little paws down here because they've disappeared. I'm just going into the brown and I'm going to look at the picture I have in front of me and I'm going to bring his little paws down. This is my rich brown now, just my rich brown. You don't really want black down here and you want to find one little paw. You can do it with a pen if you prefer not to do it this way. Another little paw. Oops, lost that one, should have stayed this way. And then his thumb. Okay, let me wipe this guy out. Okay. 
Now, if you feel there's not enough definition there, another reason that I keep white handy is just for things like this. You can put a little white in there like that and that. And see how it helps? And it will kind of pull them out. Now we're going to do the other side. He has a little paw over here too. Find his arm, arm a little bit there. And come around. Oops. Let's define his arm a little bit here too. Just back pull with your fing with your brush. Okay, like that. Now it's a little heavy handed, of course. And on this side, I don't really like the slope. That's better. And then I'm going to take my Pico Pay, define his fingers a little. Take a little white. Oh, too strong. And just put a little white in there. Okay. And then you, while you still have the white on your brush, you can kind of feather this out so it doesn't look like it's quite so. And then I would take my regular brush and sort of push it aside a little, just so that it's not so heavy handed. Take your time with it. Don't, if you get frustrated, step away, come back. Wipe it off, come back. It's up to you, but you, you have to take your time with it. Okay, now that's what I have so far. Okay, right, now we're gonna work on this guy. Same thing, going back to my number six. I'm gonna take my, my black, mix it into my yellow brown, just like I did when I was using the, the other color. And I'm gonna go down the front of him. Down the front of him on this side, on an angle, just like I did when I painted him. And I'm going to come up from the bottom, like this, and up from here. And then I'm going to put a little definition on there. And here I'm just going to pull out the color a little bit. Cleaning my brush. And I'm going to put a little yellow-brown up in here. And then I'm going to take a little of the yellow, dark yellow-brown, the yellow-brown number two, and go back up in here and just touch the color in. See how it helps to make it go together? You don't want it to look like it doesn't belong together. You want it, the colors to be similar all the way across. They can be dark, but they have to be similar. Okay, and then here I'm adding a little black. Oh, come here, you. There we go. A little black. And I'm adding a little black over here because it's, yeah. His paws come down, but they go behind the log, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna put a little dark here too, and then I'm gonna decide which of these is on top. And I think this guy's on top. So I'm gonna clean my rake and try using the rake. I'm just gonna pull it out like this. That way he looks like he's on top. I use kind of the side of my rake. I know it seems silly because it's you look at it and you go, well, it doesn't have many many furs on it, but that that's part of the the beauty of it. And then this guy needs a little more dark right underneath his chin. So I'm just taking black. Oops. I think I only had turpentine on there. Let me get some black. There we go. Up. Oh. And I'm just gonna tap some black in. There and there. Then I'm gonna make sure his muzzle is cleaned out. Same thing with his. 
Okay, and now I'm going to look at the log. Now, if you did a good job on the log, the log is pretty dark. So I'm using my liner. I don't want to over darken it. I'm going to take a little black, mix it with a little of the dark brown, the, and just add some shadows. A few shadows. And I'm letting my brush skip. And then if I think it's too, too much of a line, I smear it with a different brush, like um, the one I have right there. There we go. There we go. And then here. You're just tapping in a little shadow because they're over the top of it. And then down in here, you're just tapping in a little more shadow if you need it. And then you can take this and come back and wipe out and see if maybe by wiping out a little, you can create a little more. See here, it's a little dark. I use my eraser. It's almost like a um, palette knife. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. The only other thing I'm going to do is take my pointer. I'm cleaning it off real well. I'm going to put a little white on it. I know, I know. I'm going to add in a little white. I know you're not supposed to be able to do, supposed to be able to do this with china paint, but it will make a difference. Okay. All right. I don't want to get too crazy here. I take a little bit of there. Define him a little. Mm-hmm. Define him a little. I like him real well. I think he's turning out real good, the, the middle guy. This guy, I think, just needs a little there. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do the sky. I was thinking about it. Um, when uh, Diana Rose showed us how to do these little guys, and mine are different than hers, but um, she didn't do the sky, and she had all this around it. And um, I really think that that gave you some relief. So I'm not going to do the sky. Now, you notice here, this log doesn't go all the way over. If you want to make it go over, you can. Just add some dark now, because if you don't add the dark now, it won't go over. There you go. Okay. I think that finishes it off a little better. And I might need a little dark right here. I'm using my fur brush, because <laughs> it was handy. As far as the grass, I'm just going to finish off the grass. I'm going to use um, this brush, which is the rake, and I'm just going to add some some um, some grass green to it to give it a little texture. A rake will give you a lot of texture if you let it. And I'm just touching the top part of it. So I get the grass green on there and I'm just touching the top part of it. I've already signed it. I think that helps. We just want to add a little green in here. I don't want to take away from my subject. Okay. Now go over the edge. It doesn't matter right now. Go over the edge because you want to get the grass to look like grass. There we go. You can always wipe it off. And then take your Q-tip and go around the edge. Now I've already decided with these little guys that I want a green edge on it. And I think I may put a little gold around on the this at the very end. Um, you know, the, the little bit of trim there. But right now, my, my goal is to try to get the green a little bit darker around the edge. See if that's what I want to do. 
you don't have to do it. You may find you don't like it. That's fine. This is where that big brush comes in. I have a, whatever this is, a three quarter inch, I believe. And you also want to make sure your color is the same all the way. So see down here, it's a little darker. So you kind of have to keep playing with it. This is where these turntables come in handy. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and they really seem to help. I'm going to take my Q-tip and just run it around the top here. Even though I'm going to do that part in gold. won't do it on this fire. I will fire and then I will do it. places where these little curly cues come out. And I'm just highlighting them. I may decide I just like it and I'm just going to leave it. So I want to make sure I have that option. Okay. That's my little guy. Let's see. Um, that's, that's it for this time. Pick up those brushes. Keep painting. See you next time. Bye-bye. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.